When you think about it, winning a NASCAR race is pretty hard. A driver has to beat roughly 40 other drivers on track, not to mention the physical and mental strength it requires. Winning a NASCAR race puts you in elite company, as only 204 people have ever won at NASCAR's top level. But as many of you know, luck often plays a huge factor in who wins the race. Factors like fuel strategy, pit road issues, wrecks, poorly timed cautions, and falling off late can all mess things up for the race's dominant car. In fact, between 2010 and 2020, the driver who led the most laps only won 38% of the time. This fact led me to seek out what was the most lucky win in NASCAR's history. There have been a ton of lucky wins in NASCAR, so I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. But I want to look at many of these finishes and determine what is truly the luckiest win in the history of NASCAR. So when I began compiling this video, I naturally started the search by looking at Daytona and Talladega finishes. Once again, there is a long list of lucky wins at these tracks, so I'll keep it to the winners that are lucky for a unique reason. I will quickly just cover a few. In the 2012 Truck Series opener, a young kid named John King won in only his 8th career start. He only had one top 15 in his career, so how did he get to victory lane? On the first green white checkered attempt, King was in second place and tagged the right rear of Johnny Sauter coming to the white flag. Sauter wrecked hard and a red flag was brought out. When the race restarted, King was given the lead again because of the scoring loop system and won the race under yellow due to a last lap yellow flag. Trevor Bain won the 2011 Daytona 500 on a green-white checkered attempt as well. He was given the push of a lifetime by Bobby Labonte on the restart and cruised to victory. David Reagan won at Talladega in 2013, leading only the last lap after a huge push from teammate David Gilland. Tiny Lund won the 1963 Daytona 500 after filling in for the injured Marvin Panch. The seas parted for Michael McDowell on the last lap of the 2021 Daytona 500 after Penske teammates crashed. The caution came out just in time for Michael McDowell to be scored the leader. One second later, then Chase Elliott would have been declared the winner. Although there was an element of luck for each of these instances, I can't say that they were even close to the luckiest. The reason is that each of these drivers did put themselves in a position to win, and some made great moves to do so. Every driver knows that there is unpredictability at the end of a super speedway race, so being able to stay patient is a key part of a driver's skill set. But there is one finish at Daytona that is unlike the rest of these. 22-year-old James Busher was racing a part-time schedule for Turner Scott Motorsports in the Nationwide Series for 2012. He was able to race in the season opener at Daytona. While he had put a decent race together, he was nowhere in contention for the win. On turn 4 of the final lap, Busher was in 11th place whenever every single car in front of him was caught up in a violent wreck. Several cars nearly hit him, but he escaped without contact and took home the victory. As I said earlier, in most of these cases, I would say that the driver put himself in a position to take advantage of the situation. However, no one would have thought that 11th place would be the place to be on the last lap. Busher isn't the only driver to win a race at Daytona on the last lap, as Derek Cope did it way back in 1990. Cope was part of a four-car train at the front of the field, with Dell and Hart leading. However, Earnhardt cut a tire entering turn 3 of the final lap, allowing Cope to get by with ease. What makes this extremely lucky for Cope is that it wasn't a random crash or a mistake by Earnhardt, he just got a fluke flat tire. Without it, I think it's safe to say Dell would have won with ease. Next, I want to look at some wins that have come down to fuel strategy. Now, the argument could be made that pitch strategy is part of the competitive nature of the sport and doesn't really come down to luck. That is a totally fair argument, and I actually agree, but I do want to take a look at one specific example. At Auto Club in 2016, Kyle Busch was putting on a clinic. He had won the last three races and was on his way to win his fourth in a row. After leading 133 of 150 laps, he only needed to lead one more to win. Unfortunately for Bush, as he crossed the white flag, his tire cut. 
Debris flew across the track as Daniel Suarez took over the lead. However, just seconds later, Suarez ran out of gas. Austin Dillon in third was more than five seconds behind. Kyle Busch, with the blown tire, got back by Suarez for the lead, only to be passed by Austin Dillon off the exit of turn four. So for Dillon, I think this definitely qualifies as a lucky fuel mileage win. But this isn't the last of Dillon we will see on the list. So the next category of lucky race wins that I thought of was weather impacted wins. Eric Amarola, Bubba Wallace, and more drivers have gotten their first cup wins from rain shortened races. Once again, the argument could be made that all of the teams were aware of impending weather, so strategy played a factor. But there are a couple of cases that stick out from typical rain impacted wins. On lap 120 of the 2019 Coke 0400, a massive crash happened in front of the field, taking out many contenders. Kurt Busch was really the only front runner who escaped the wreck unscathed. Under caution, teams knew the rain was coming. However, NASCAR gave the one to go signal, which told teams that they were going back to racing. The majority of the field came down pit road as they were near the end of their fuel window. Justin Haley's crew decided to stay out, hoping for the rain to pick up. And the next time around, NASCAR waved off the one to go and eventually pulled the field to pit road. Justin Haley, a couple of hours later, was declared the winner. I think what makes this a true candidate to be the luckiest win is that more than 10 cars were taken out in a wreck in front of Haley, and then he was able to take advantage of NASCAR's move to wave off the one to go. If NASCAR didn't make this decision, there is really no chance Haley in a 2019 Spire car would have been able to hang on to the lead for even a couple of laps. And I don't think Kurt Busch's team really made a mistake. They got pretty screwed by NASCAR. So this next one's gonna need some explaining, but it is Austin Dillon's 2022 Daytona win. Essentially, every competitive car was taken out in a crash. This crash was no driver's mistake as a rain cloud came out of nowhere and soaked the track entering turn one. All of the top competitors were taken out. The only two competitive cars left were RCR teammates Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick. This race was the cutoff race for the playoffs, and Reddick was locked in while Dillon was not. Not to mention, Reddick had just signed with 2311 and was under contract for RCR for 2023. And Richard Childress was pretty upset by this. Reddick decided to play the team game in an effort to get back on Richard's good side. He had to defend Dillon from the stout competition of Landon Castle, Noah Gregson, BJ McLeod, Cody Ware, and Austin Sendrick. So yeah, I think it's safe to say this was pretty lucky. All your competition is wiped out, and your talented teammate is doing everything he can do to help you win. It doesn't get any easier than that. And in 1990 at North Wilkesboro, Brett Bodine claimed his first and only cup win but it did not come without controversy. The confusion began when Kenny Wallace brought out the caution on lap 321 when he spun in turn one. The caution came out during green flag pit stops. NASCAR kept the race under caution for 18 laps as they attempted to sort out the scoring. They eventually told Del Earnhardt, Darrell Waltrip, and other drivers who stayed out under the caution to get behind Brett Bodine, who had pitted during the caution with other drivers. Many felt like Waltrip should have been leading and that he was robbed, and some sources conclude he was robbed. Although this was, or just may have been, a major mistake on NASCAR's end, Bodine still had to lead the last 60 laps of the race in front of Darrell Waltrip and Del Earnhardt, which he did. So after all of this discussion, I am finally getting to what I have concluded as probably the luckiest win in NASCAR's history. Through all the research, back and forth thinking, and reading, I believe this is it. Mark Martin had dominated the 1994 Goodies 250 and seemed to have it all but one whenever Hermie Sadler and Robert Presley brought out the caution with five laps to go. NASCAR declared the race would end under caution, as there were no green-white checkered finishes at the time. The booth raved about Martin's dominance, winning from the pole for a second race in a row after a relatively slow start to the season. Tommy Houston pulled alongside him and congratulated him on the victory. But Mark Martin made a fatal mistake. As the field came to the checkered flag, 
Mark took off his gloves, went down pit road, and headed to victory lane, instead of crossing the start-finish line. So Mark did not cross the start-finish line first. It was David Green. He was handed the victory, the second of his Bush Series career. Mark was a class act after the fact, making jokes about the situation as it was an incredible mistake. Even though it was a mistake by Mark, from David Green's perspective, it doesn't get any luckier than that. The race was over, he had finished second. There was no strategy, the team didn't make a mistake. It's not like Mark's car quit, or he even wrecked the car under caution. A one in a million mistake from one of the best to ever do it. I think it's safe to say that we'll never see anything quite like this again. That's why I believe this is the luckiest win in NASCAR history. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is this the luckiest win? Did I miss any? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you guys leave a like if you enjoy, and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.